Welcome to INS Television, coming to you, as you probably have gathered by now, from British Columbia in Western Canada. Canadians throughout this huge country of ours know two names from their past um, as being synonymous with pleasure and entertainment. Those names are Mark Kenny and Dal Richards, two very remarkable gentlemen who both have received the Order of Canada, Canada's highest award for civilians, and both of whom happened to be in the same place at the same time when we got to sit down and talk to them very recently. And I'm sitting here, if you can hear voices in the background, I'm sitting here with two giants of the music industry, Dal Richards and Mark Kenny. We're on the stage of the Clark Foundation Theatre, and I just want to get these two talking about old times together. Mark, you have known this young shaver for quite a long time, haven't you? Tell us a little bit about how you met. Oh, well, he was a mere boy at the time. Uh, as a matter of fact, we go back quite a long way. And uh, Well, I, actually, what happened was... Uh, I was playing at the Hotel Vancouver, and uh, there was a chap that had the band out at the Alma Academy on Alma and Broadway, not the one that's there now, the restaurant. And uh, the, the, the leader of that band was a chap by the name of Stan Patton. And Stan, for years, has been bugging me to uh, to come with my band because he, he we traveled a lot, and he felt that that would be an interesting thing for him to do. And so uh, finally, uh, we we did make a change in the orchestra, and uh, Stan came with us. And of course, then that left the position of band leader open at the Alma Academy, and it was filled by a young gentleman by the name of Dal Richards. So, uh, of course, when it came time for us to move, and we always went away one, one place or another in the summer. And, uh, so, uh, of course, uh, Stan was with me by that time, and we needed a replacement. And so I'll never forget uh, Mr. Milet uh, saying to me, have you anybody in mind? And, uh, of course, I thought of Dal because he had taken over the orchestra that normally did that job. And I think Dal must, well, I remember Mr. Milet saying to me, he said, do you think he'll do a good job? <laughs> I guess he did because he was there for 25 years, you know. What he's saying, Dal, is that whatever happened to you, it's all his fault. How do you accept that? <laughs> well, I'll accept that. If you call that a fault, I'll accept it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> It seems that your careers have sort of paralleled each other. You, you played a lot of the same venues, and you've worked with a lot of great people. Tell us a little bit about what it was like getting into music way back, in, way before even I was born, just about, and that goes back a little way. Well, oddly enough, Martin and I started at the same high school, uh, although he was a few years before me, McGee High School in Vancouver. And uh, at that time, I was uh, a member of a youth band, the Kiss Line and Boys Band, under the direction of Arthur Delamont. And he was a rather progressive musician and progressive leader. He had played in the theater pits in Vancouver. So I got attracted to popular music for that reason and, and formed a, a little dance band in high school and started playing at the local golf clubs adjacent to, or nearby the school, the Marine Drive Golf Club and Point Grey and so forth. And my interest in pop music developed from there, there at that point. And then I formed a what we called a pep band at McGee High School. We would play concerts and we'd play pep meetings before sports events and so forth in the, lo in the high school auditorium. And from there was a logical step into professional music after I graduated from school. And uh, I think my first, my, I know my first job was a place called the Winter Garden, which was an amusement park in down on English Bay in Vancouver with a ballroom at the end of that park. That was my first professional job in 19, 38. That's the first time Dal Richards Band actually had its sign up on the marquee. And that, interesting enough, I shouldn't tell the world, was the year that I was born. So, But one of the things that impresses me about uh, talking with guys like you is that the way you casually toss into conversation, conversation names like Bing Crosby and Bob Hope, names that sort of really struck awe into people in my generation, were they big names then? I mean, were you ever awestruck with the names of the people you were performing around, or were they not that well known at that time? Mart? Well, uh, uh, I, I happened to, to, when I was in the Toronto area, uh, I, was, I got involved with, the, uh, with crippled children through the Easter Seals. And uh, on two or three occasions, I was chairman of, uh, of the broadcast committee. 
I was very successful, and I think it, it was 1967, uh, uh, through the with the assistance of Max Bell, who was a very prominent person in uh, Calgary. I was able to contact Bing uh, Crosby, and he was an absolutely marvelous person to work with. Uh, it turned out that the day of the concert, uh, which was then called Timmy's Easter Parade of Stars, it happened on my birthday. And uh, a after the program was all over, we went upstairs, and, uh, and Bing had been tipped off. And so when they wheeled in a birthday cake for me, Bing jumped up on a chair and sang Happy Birthday, Martin. That was quite a thrill for me, I can, I can assure you, because he was a very, very big name in show business. You came along just a few years after that, Dal. Who were some of the big names you got to work with? Well, oddly enough, I encountered Bing Crosby before Mart did. Uh, in 1951, he came to Vancouver and brought his craft music hall program, radio program, to broadcast from the old forum in the P&E Garden, P&E Grounds. And I contracted the orchestra. John Scott Trotter was the orchestra leader, but I contracted the musicians to play for him. And he was in the city for about three days, and I got to know him a little bit, not well by any means, but. Uh, found it fascinating to be around the group because he brought a total entourage with him. He had Ray Milland and he had Marilyn Maxwell and uh, Perry Botkin was a guitar player and so forth and a couple of musicians from Hollywood and the rest were all Vancouver musicians. But it was an interesting association. But you mentioned uh, Bob Hope and uh, whether we, I'm asking you, Martin, me, were awestruck or not. The first time I played for him, I was. We, had, we it was in the Hotel Vancouver, and it was a special event of some description. And we had rehearsed the rest of the show, and we were waiting there for Bob to appear. And he was a little late after our rehearsal. But we are patiently waiting, and I saw him come out of the darkened ballroom and step up on the stage and had this golf club with him, as he seems, seemingly always does. And I think at that moment, I, I was impressed. I thought, there is the legend, right there. That is he. That is the man. And that is the Bob Hope we've all heard about. And I was impressed. Uh, I'm glad to hear you say that because I was impressed just to know that you met him. Um, the thing that crosses my mind is that, I mean, you guys have been playing music upwards of 60 years. Now, I imagine you have taken on some new styles, but one of the things that is interesting, you seem to also to have kept the old styles going, and it seems to be making a resurgence. There seems to be a lot of people out there who like the music you play. Um, what do you think of modern music? You would ask me first. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's abominable. <laughs> well, uh, I hate to say that, but I do find it a bit boring. Uh, the, the chord structure, for example, uh, we've both come up uh, d during an era of, of fantastic c composers, people like Cole Porter and, uh, and Duke Ellington, who uh, have maybe eight chord changes in a bar, you know, and 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 when you when you hear uh, songs that uh, are so repetitious and the, the the harmony is restricted to maybe two or three chords at the outside. That is the thing I think that that that, that bothers us. It, it's just a, a, a lack of variety, if anything. Do you know uh, and sheer talent in the, on the on the part of the composers because the songs were extremely important to us. I don't know about most people, but to me, everything sounds alike. Mm -hmm. I must say, some of the lyrics are mind-blowing. But I want to ask you a slightly different question, Dan. I mean, you are still playing on a regular basis. Here you are at the Clark Foundation Theatre tonight, the night we're recording this. Have you noticed any changes in the audience? I mean, are you getting a, still a cross-section of young people, or are your audience mainly older people who are reminiscing after the past? Their older people are still here, and those who are with us, mm -hmm. and are enjoying the music that they've associated with with their youth in the 40s and the 50s, maybe even the 30s, but there is an element now of the young crowd coming along, absolutely. The 30, 40, 50 years old, 50 year olds, they're, they're finding boredom with the kind of music you just mentioned and they no longer have an interest. It was okay for, for their teenage level 
years, but now they want something more sophisticated and more interesting. And they're turning to the music of Rogers and Hart and Mervyn Berlin and Cole Porter and the Gershwins. Hey, Mr. Betsy, you'll be telling me next that people are now starting to dance actually touching each other. Well, that, that, that was a lost art, I'm afraid. Uh, but there, there still are some people who do enjoy dancing. And uh, I know there's a big resurgence of the big bands in, in the Toronto area. And I don't believe it has taken on here quite so much, but uh, it will, I believe. And, uh, it, and But there's a lot of interest in, in a magazine now in the Toronto area called uh, the, uh, what is it, the Big Band Report or something? Remember yes, I? it's, well, Big Bands, yeah, Big Band Journal or Big Band Report, something, something, something like that. Yeah. And uh, you're right, Mart, there's, there's quite, quite a surge of interest in big bands in the Toronto area, not, and not so much here. But it's growing. We've been, we're busier now than we were 10 years ago. What's the hardest part of, of doing what you do now? Is it the travel? I mean, we, neither of you are in the first flush of youth when ready to put up with the sort of hardships you do when you're a young man. How do you find the traveling? Well, I don't do very much traveling. It's restricted compared to the old days of road tours. There's nothing like that. Uh, if we travel, it's within the province or to Vancouver Island as a rule and it's usually a short hop and if it's any longer than that it's by air and that's no difficulty so it's, it's not a hardship. I know that Mark you're always going off. When's your next trip and where are you playing next? Well I'm playing uh, this month in uh, in Saskatchewan at Watrous. They've uh, refurbished the dance hall there and they've uh, winterized it and last year I played there for one night and this year they've asked me to go back for two. Next month I'll be in the Toronto area I'm doing a, a date at the Royal York and then on the Monday and Tuesday uh, at the at a place called Stage West which is uh, in Edmonton. No, in Toronto. In Toronto, okay. They have one in Edmonton as well. Another question for you. I guess it must have been a question, a matter of some nostalgia for you when the Panorama Roof uh, closed because I think you both played there, haven't you, at various times? Well, I was only in the, at, the, at the Panorama Roof for one season, uh, and uh, then I moved east for 30 years. But Dal was there a, a, a great deal, and uh, I, I'm sure that it means a lot to him. Mm. Any specific memories? That, you know, I imagine you must have hundreds of them, but anything stands out in your memory of the Panorama Roof? Well, it, it, the, what impresses me now and what gratifies me now at this advanced years, these advanced years, is that uh, we gave a lot of good memories to people during the roof years. Uh, they were celebrating events that were important to them, anniversaries, wedding receptions, birthdays and so forth, engagements, and uh, all part of the social fabric of their life. And we participated in that, and that's important to me now, the fact that we we're able to leave good memories with people all, over all these years. We played uh, a closing week at the roof last uh, September, September of 90, 1996. And it was a sellout situation for the entire week, the total week. Uh, every night was a sellout because people wanted one more chance to come to the roof. And, and it was like a house party for five nights. Everyone had a story to tell. Everybody had a favorite story or, or a memory of the roof and what it meant to them and they exchanged stories. And it was, it was a marvelous closing to the roof. But the, the roof was closed publicly, but it's, it'll live forever in, in a lot of Vancouver uh, people's minds. I just want to get uh, cameraman director Chris to see if he can zoom in where my finger is pointing because there's one other remarkable um, attribute that you two gentlemen share and that's this little sign here I think which is the Order of Canada and I've never sat I've found it quite uh, daunting to sit with one member of that order but to sit with two on the same stage at the same time is quite remarkable. Did it come as a surprise to you when you uh, both found out you're both going to share the same award not necessarily at the same time? I, it certainly was a surprise to me, and, and, and I, I would assume that uh, Dal had the same feelings. Total surprise to me. I, I live in a condominium, and I went to my mailbox to pick up my mail one morning, and there were some 
correspondence from Ottawa, and I just assumed it was the income tax <laughs> department. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite a surprise and quite a pleasant surprise, I might add. Well, I would say it's a very fitting uh, mark of appreciation from a country for two gentlemen who have really given a, a lot of their lives to the people. And I really appreciate you both taking time out to talk with us this afternoon. It's great to have you both here. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you for Thank inviting you very much. us. But please welcome the Dal Richards Orchestra. <laughs> <laughs>